One of these strings and not like the other. I don't know which one of these covers to use. Which one should I use? Uh, vote down there in the 2v2. You're too late. <laughs> Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Uh, this is going to be a retro review, but I got done with the book in time. So today we are talking about Dean Koontz's The Mask or Owen West's. Yeah, because that's the name that he originally wrote this under. I do not have an Owen West copy of the book, but I do have these. There's uh, this one, which is far superior to this one, but this one fits in with the uh, black neon, what I call the black neon. It's the old Berkeley novels that have uh, a black cover, there's something floating in the air over here, a uh, black cover with some neon writing on it, um, and they, they always smell... That this one doesn't smell anywhere near as good as this one. Um, so if you're a book sniffer, definitely go for this one. But uh, this was the second book that Dean Koontz published under the pen name Owen West. The first one being The Fun House, uh, which was... I can't rem recall, I don't even know that I know whether or not uh, it was a movie first or a book first, but I do know that uh, Owen West... Uh, wrote the screenplay for F The Fun House, which was an 80s slasher movie. Um, the book came out in 80... The Fun House came out in 1980. The Mask came out in 1981. So, Owen West was rather more along the lines of Kuntz's, um horror, just straight horror, uh, because that's what this one is. Uh, it reads a lot like Richard Lehman. Um, it's not rapey. Uh, as a as a layman book is, or some of Kuntz's other books, but it does have more of the horror vibe uh, than, let's say, any just about any of his other books, uh, Night Chills, those kind of things. Um, it also has like the Eyes of Darkness. One of the things that I brought up uh, in that book was this: the book has the quickest ending. You, you're hanging out for 300 pages, you're getting to know these people, things are happening, and right when it starts to get interesting, right when you start to get an ending, he wraps it up on the very last page. And I know it's like, well, that's what you're supposed to do at the ending. I'm talking like there's no, there's no real build-up to the ending, it's just one scene of action, and then it's over. And in this one, this is probably the worst um, example, of, no, actually the best example of that bullshit because you get no answers whatsoever. And I'm not talking about, like, an allusion to a mystery. I'm talking about there's no wrap-up whatsoever. Um, the, the book literally ends, and this might be a spoiler. It says, uh, the girl says, spiders, the girl said, quivering uncontrollably. No, honey, Carol said, no spiders. There aren't any spiders on you. Not now, not anymore. And she looked at Grace, wondering. That was it. Um, there's no discussion between them about what happened. There's really no ending other than the action on that page, and that's it. Uh, in fact, I am giving this one a big fat one star because the entire book is ruined by the ending. Um, there's a, there isn't as much Koontz stuff going on here. Um, as there usually is, there's no intelligent dog, there, there is a blonde, um, there is sodium vapor, street lamps, uh, which if you're a longtime Coons fan, you'll understand that every single one of his books has a blonde, a, uh, a bougainvillea plant, bougainvillea plant, however you pronounce it, and sodium vapor street lights. Every now and again he'll change it up and do like mercury vapor, but he has a, he has an obsession with those three things. Uh, as on top of that, you have super smart dog, government conspiracy, so on and so forth. This one, um, which we will get to a little bit more in the uh, spoiler section of the review after the outro, uh, this one doesn't deal with any of the usual Kuntzian uh, uh, type things that I usually pick on, uh, pick on, pick out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I did have fun with this book up until the ending, but the fun that I was having mostly was um, I'm doing this reread with my, my friend Dealey, uh, up in Canada. She's a fantastic person, super fun. I don't even know if she watches these videos, um, but she's super fun to read with, and we like picking um, on the books as much as we like reading them. Uh, 
And even with her, she brought up some things. It's like, uh, the main character doesn't seem like she'd be driving a Volkswagen, does she? And she doesn't. She seems like uh, she's she'd be a Mercedes or a Beamer type lady. Uh, there, there's some character problems in, in, in the book where some of the characters don't act right. Uh, the, the teenage girl in the book definitely uh, doesn't act like a teenage girl. Uh, there's no wrap-up. Uh, with the teenage girl, um, and I'll get to more of that in the spoiler section. I don't want to give too much away here at the beginning. I don't recommend this book mainly because most most of Kuntz's fans, um, and I'm not I'm not punching down here. Most of Kuntz, Kuntz's fans are very easy to please as long as they they have uh, as a beginning, middle, and end, and there's some kind of action, some kind of horror, some kind of sci-fi. You know, they're usually happy. Uh, a Kuntz reader is kind of like a Patterson reader. They're not looking for, you know, the next big literary novel. They're looking for an escape. This book does not really provide an escape. Um, in fact, it provides frustration. So I, I try to look at these things as someone um, who, and while I do not like Dean Kuntz anymore, while I give him a bunch of crap, I do know he has his 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 fans. Sorry, my nose is itching like crazy. I don't know what's going on. I keep feeling like I have to sneeze, so I apologize for, you know, scratching my nose over and over and over again. It can't be helped. But with, with this one, I don't think even Dean Koontz fans would like it. And I spoke to uh, two other people, one on Instagram and one on Goodreads, about that are huge Dean Koontz fans, and they both hated this book. So if you're a Dean Koontz fan, I doubt you'll like this one. Another thing is, this is one of the rare occasions where Dean Koontz travels into the supernatural whole hog. And he does that in Odd Thomas. He does that once or twice, a couple times in his career. But mostly, he tries to root things in a realist, even if it's sci-fi or fantasy elements, he tries to root it in reality. Like he'll have, uh, like in one book, he described supernatural uh, activity as like nanoparticles or something like that. He tries to give them a realistic expectation. It, that's one of the problems with this book is you see him constantly reaching trying to explain stuff that he himself does not believe in or does not think possible. Um, and it, it's almost, it's, it's like watching Stanley Kubrick's The Shining where you're dealing with someone who doesn't have that, that childlike imagination um, and you're getting a very clinical, scientific aspect of it. So when they do get down to the supernatural business, it seems kind of hokey and overdone because they just don't know how to do it. They don't have it in them. Um, they don't have the childlike wonder that it takes to describe these these things or show these things if, you, if you're talking about a movie element. That's one of the things with Kuntz. Kuntz has always been, he, he's never written children right. Or, or well, um, even though one of my favorite books from him is The Voice of the Night, one of the kids is uh, an evil character, and one of the kids is precocious. So you have a super smart kid, and you have a, a bad kid, and those are always much easier to write than innocence. Um, so, or or a, a childlike, you know, a wonder or whatever. Um, now, when he does write children, most of, most of the time, the kids in his books have some kind. They like to build models. Um, you know, the model airplanes, model uh, toy. You know, like uh, monster mo movie uh, characters, that kind of thing. Um, so all of his all of his children characters are pretty much the same. I'm not sure if he ever had kids or if he just had dogs. He does not seem like a parent because all of the children pretty much read the same way. Um, but that's all I have for the non-spoiler aspect. If you're hanging around for the, if you want spoilers and what I liked and didn't like about the actual goings on of the book, hang around until um, after the outro. Have you read Dean Koontz's The Mask or Owen West The Mask? If you have, let me know how you felt about it down there in the doobly-doo. If you do not share my opinion of Koontz and you love Koontz wholeheartedly and you want to give him a big old hug and kiss, please just don't be rude about it. I, all of us have different tastes and whatnot. I will. I have no problem discussing, you know, the the good and bad of Koontz down there. Just don't be a dick. Um, but until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Oh Lord. Ooh, it is hot out here this morning. This it, it is three three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure exactly when it is. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's already hot out here. Um...
So, Dean Koontz is the mask. Here's the spoiler section. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Flashing lights. Spoilers, spoilers. Um, I'm going to talk about just about everything that I had a problem with in this book. Uh, now, so if you don't, if you haven't read it and you don't want to be spoiled, GTFO. Uh, so the, the the whole plot to this book is reincarnation, and you can tell that maybe Dean Koontz, you know, he was excited to maybe try out the idea, but he doesn't really believe in it. So everything that came, everything that uh, was discussed as far as reincarnation is concerned, was complete is completely hokey. It's very silly, laughable. Um, you got the feeling that he was trying his hardest to not only convince the reader that this could happen, but to convince himself that it could happen. Um, but it did lend a little, it and lended a little bit more mystery than normal Koontz. It wasn't predictable in that um, me and Dee Lee caught on early on who who the girl was. Uh, she was the the main character's daughter that she'd given up when when she was younger. Um, but when it, when it started, when she was all these different people, when the the girl Jane Doe, I guess we'll call her, when she was all those different people. Um, I was like, what the hell is going on? Is she possessed by, like, this demon who's been possessing girls or whatever? So it did offer a little bit more mystery than your normal Dean Koontz book, because usually Dean Koontz's twists are rather predictable. I think he's only fooled me one time, and that was with Odd Thomas. I didn't see that coming, um, with, uh, Stormy. But the, uh, the, the, the issue, again, with the, 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 the main character... Not the main character, Jane Jane Doe, with, with the girl, um, the one that's re been reincarnated over and over again. Where did she come from? Where did this girl come from? Um, it's, it's explained all these other. Where did this girl live? Who has she been living with this whole time? Did she was she always had? Did she always have the? End? There's so many questions that we get nothing, no answers to. There at the end, we know that she's this woman's daughter, she's Carol's daughter, but we have absolutely no idea uh, where this girl has been living, what she's been doing, there's no wrap-up, there's no, you know, not even a happy ever, happily ever after or an ending, anything, <laughs> there's there's no wrap-up, it's like with Stephen King and Cell, he just stopped writing, um, which blew my mind. Um, another thing is, me and Dee Lee were talking about how quickly uh, Grace kills Ari, or Aristophanes. Uh, which, oddly enough, I ha every time I came across it, it, the cat's name in this book, I had to read it out loud. So I'd just be reading along, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, Aristophanes. Da -da 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 -da. Just silence. And then, Aristophanes. For some odd reason, every time I came across the name, I had to read it out loud. It was the weirdest fucking thing, man. Um, but she, she just murks him. She just blows him away in the kitchen. He's just like, okay, the cat had to die. I understand the cat was possessed, but by what? What was in the cat? And what forces were they talking about? Good, bad, evil, whatever. What forces? Are we talking about like God and Satan? Are we just talking about evil uh, demons? Or what, 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 what are we talking about? I don't know. Um, I read the, the whole book over the course of like three or four days, and I have no idea what the threat was. All I know is there was reincarnation. That's it. That's all I know about it. Um, the... Uh, the dialogue in here was really bad, um, especially from the girl's point of view, because she said some shit I have never heard a teenager in the 80s or 90s ever say, like swell. Um, there was some, there's some stuff that she was talking like she was from the 50s. Now, even though this is about reincarnation, the girl never showed any signs of her other personalities there um, other than when she was hypnotized. So where did she get this swell and all these, you know, all these, all these other terms that, you know, from the past that she wouldn't have come across? The problem was, is that's probably how Dean Koontz talked when he was younger. Um, but the, uh, I think the main problem, like I said over and over again, is just that ending, man. That ending does not wrap anything up. It is just a big pile of fuck you, um, and it actually upset me. The only reason why I'm not more ragey now and tossing books around like I normally do, like, ooh, you know, fuck this book, is because I've, I've given it a couple days. I finished reading it either Thursday or Friday, something like that. I gave it a couple days to just, you know, kind of chill, chill in my head and, sorry, it is hot, uh, chill in my head to figure it out. Um, but, yeah, th this one is easily, easily one of the worst, and it's basically because Dean Koontz did not commit. 
Um, he he has that problem uh, a lot of the time where he does not commit to his ideas, and this is one of those things where he did not commit. Uh, another time when he did not commit was in the final Odd Thomas book that just absolutely, I mean, I almost, I almost lit that book on fire. I was so mad. Um, it's one of those times when it's like he's built up this entire series of things and there's certain rules you had to go by. And then he breaks them all for that final book, like whether or not the dead can talk and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, but... I'm not going to spoil. We'll, we'll talk about the Odd Thomas series when we get there. But yeah, again, um, let's talk about this one down there in the doobly doo. Uh, if you got any spoilers, please label you know spoilers ahead down there if you're going to talk about it. And please, please pray for me. Pray Jesus that this nose stops itching sometime today.